We noticed our shop heater was not working correctly. It's one of these uh, Big Max heaters. This is a 45,000 BTU heater and it's it started up okay but then it shut off very quickly it only ran for maybe a minute and then it would kick back on run another minute shut off again and it kept doing that so it took a long time to get the uh, shop up to temperature to work in so just to see what's inside of this thing So I've never really done anything much to any of these. I did replace the circuit board, get a light on here. About three years ago, it had an issue where it wouldn't start at all. And it turned out that the whole circuit board was fried and it needed a new circuit board. So we replaced that and it's been working good for the past three years. Uh, there's a green light. I'll turn the flashlight out for a minute. You can see blinking on there. So it's, Currently I have the thermostat turned off so it's not going to start up and that's just its normal mode when it's standby I guess you would say. It's blinking rather slowly. Uh, when the thermostat is turned on and it's calling for heat, the same green light blinks but it blinks much faster and that just tells it that it's calling for heat. So I noticed when this thing was shutting off it was having four quick flashes and then a pause and then four quick flashes and a pause so when you pull this side panel off there is some codes on it and it tells me that four quick flashes on this is a high limit or rollout switch is open I have no idea what they were talking about there is on this diagram if I can get it in here um, this label right here says rollout switch and this one up here says rollout switch. Just based on the colors and the wiring diagram, right in there, kind of looks like a little button with a couple of screws sticking out. It's actually attached from the other side of this panel. So those are the pointed ends of the screws that you can see. If I look behind the circuit board, so there's the other side of the switch where the wires connect to it. And there is a reset button in between where the two electrical wires attach on it. My reset button was not popped out, so there's nothing there to reset on that switch. Now the other switch looks completely different than that. And it is just that panel there with the two wires connected. Now as you know, this is in the shop and the shop creates a lot of sawdust from the jobs and stuff that we do in here. So that air hose right down here on the bottom. Uh, comes off of this diaphragm switch up here at the top. So this fan first kicks in and it creates a vacuum that sucks air in through the burner tubes in here. So when the gas comes on, it's already pulling the gas and everything in the right direction. So when the flame lights, it's going inside the burner box. And sometimes this can plug up where it attaches on this housing here. So we took it off, we made sure that was clean, there was nothing in there. Uh, the diaphragm, if you just very gently blow into that tube when you have it off, you can hear the diaphragm pop up and down in this switch. So I don't believe there was any holes in the diaphragm or creating any issue there. And since I couldn't reset that other first switch we had looked at, I had to turn my attention to this fella down here. And now that this has been off for a while and it's cooled down enough I can work on it, I'll take this out and show you what this looks like and what I believe my problem was. Okay, I've got the screws out in here and I think I'm trying to get my flashlight in position where... Oh, that wasn't good. That wasn't good. We forgot to turn the power off and something just sparked. So let's go turn the power switch off. So back to what I was showing you. I'll take this guy out. So there is a switch 
up here on the end of this and there was a lot of soot, probably sawdust that had been sucked through the heater and was burnt to an ash color on the end of this heat uh, probe or switch, whatever this is. So we used the air compressor, air hose, and we blew everything off of it, cleaned it out, blew air through the burner tubes and everything that we could in here to clean it up. And we reassembled it all and it ran through two full cycles and it seemed to work very well. So we may have solved the problem. Um, and that spark we just created, because we forgot to turn the power off, I suspect just blew a fuse on this circuit board, or at least I hope that's all that we did. Really tight spots to get at. We did, we blew this fuse that's on the circuit board. Kind of a standard automotive fuse, three amp. I don't know if I have one that small. We will go and check. Okay, well, luckily we had another 3 amp fuse, so we replaced the fuse. So we'll go ahead and get this cover back on. There's only four screws that attach these. Are so, we turned it on, the fuse is working. You can hear it starting up. So I think we have the problem fixed. Said so it ran through two full cycles before, uh, before I took that apart to show you what I had found in it. So we will, we'll let it run until we're done working in here today. And then tomorrow when it's cooled right down, because I only keep the shop just above the freezing point for paints and things that are out here. So that's why when I come out in the mornings and it's cold and I turn it on, it, it needs to run for probably close to 10 minutes before it brings it up the temperature in here. So tomorrow when it's cold, I'll come out and turn it on and, and I'll see for sure then whether it's actually going to run that 10 minutes at a time or if it's going to do the same as it did today where it just ran for a minute and then kept shutting down. So we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day. We've come out. The shop was cooled off to it was about 40 degrees Fahrenheit this morning in here. So we turned the shop heater on and it's better than it was, but it's still not 100%. Uh, it ran, got temperature up to about 65 and I normally get it up to around 70 in here and then it shut off uh, and a couple minutes later it came back on and it brought it up to the, the last few degrees. So it's running more than a minute or two at a time the way it was. Um, and normally, you know, once it's up to temperature and you're only going to drop a couple degrees and it's going to kick back in to warm that back up and it, it runs long enough each cycle to do that without any issues. So we're, we're getting into the warmer season now anyhow, so I'm not gonna do anything further with it now. Uh, maybe I'll take it apart sometime over the summertime and do a bit more cleaning in there. It certainly helped it out cleaning the parts that I did clean. So hopefully nothing needs to be replaced. Well, we've come back to the shop heater here. So I said over the summer I was gonna take it apart and do some further cleaning completely forgot about it and now we've come around to fall again we started it up and right off the bat it ran for a couple minutes and it shut off uh, so I thought okay now I forgot about it I'm gonna have to get at this thing and get it fixed well here we are once again working on our Big Max shop heater and this video is one that I've always been forgetting to get edited and get done I came out to turn it on today and the igniter is not kicking in to ignite the flame. So once again, we're back to working on this heater and it'll actually be like the third segment of this video now. So we'll have to get the video done after this and get it posted. Well, that was a little bit strange. Um, there's a blinking green light on the circuit board you've seen earlier in the video. The igniter, we, we could hear it, it was not sparking, uh, so it's not trying to light. And then the green light that flashes on the circuit board went to two quick flashes, which is its sign that it's not detecting the flame, so it shuts the unit back off again. So all that was working the way it should as far as giving you indications of the cycle and what's not working. Now, while I was speaking just a moment ago in the video, 
I heard kind of a popping noise up here. And now I take this cover off and the green light's not even on. And the power is still turned on. So it should be flashing and it's not. Yeah, that fuse popped. Now I don't know why though. It was just sitting here while I was talking to you and that fuse went. So I'm gonna get a flashlight. I'm gonna take a look at the circuit board, see if there's any hot spots, anything heating up. It looks like anything, any uh, resistors or anything that look like they're burning or anything like that. <sighs> but we definitely got to get a fuse in there so we can try and check some other things. Okay, I brought the camera up here a little closer now with a flashlight. So I went to the hardware store and got some more 3 amp fuses. It sits that little purple guy right back there in the top corner. So what I'm going to try and do, I've disconnected just about everything I can from this circuit board. So these wires here would connect onto these terminals. This is for the thermostat from the wall. So we've disconnected the thermostat. This red wire, I've just put some black electrical tape on the ends just so it doesn't touch any of this metal frame. It's off of that, which is the igniter. The top one, that's a flame sensor that's up on top. Now the wires still connect to the flame sensor on that end, but the other end of it, so that white wire that's wrapped around there, I unplugged it from the board. It comes from that flame sensor. So it's just wrapped around another wire to keep it from touching anything. The blue wire, same thing. That is disconnected from that switch that you see down in there. So if the flame was not going into those burner tubes, if the flame was actually in this area, that would trip out and shut the heater off. The red wire that is still connected to it just runs over to that one. So if you had a hole in any of those burner tubes and the flame was in the box rather than in the tube, then that switch would shut the system down. So I've disconnected everything from that circuit board. The only wires left plugged in are from the transformer itself. So I'm gonna turn the power back on. We have a new three amp fuse in. We're gonna turn the power on and if the fuse blows, the problem is either the transformer or something within the circuit board. None of the components or uh, sensors or anything, nothing else is hooked up to the board at this point. So I gotta set the camera down. We'll go turn the power on. Cross your fingers. We turn that power on and she popped the fuse immediately. Either our circuit board is fried or that transformer is allowing too much voltage to come through to the board and the fuse can't handle it. 24 volt output is what it says on the label on the transformer. I checked it with the voltmeter and my voltmeter says it's at 28.3. So it's a little bit higher than what it calls for. I don't know if that's enough to blow that fuse. So I think I'm gonna go do some research uh, see if I can find out if there is a, uh, a limit, a high and low limit that's acceptable or if it has to be exactly 24 volts. I was hoping that that would not happen, that uh, the board would actually power up and then I could start plugging things back one thing at a time and see which one I plugged in that caused the fuse to blow. That's what I was hoping for. Obviously, I'm not going to get that lucky. So we went online and checked the voltage for this uh, transformer and 28.3 is quite normal, quite common. Uh, so I don't assume that there's any problem with that transformer. So we ordered a new circuit board. It just arrived today. Hope this solves the problem. Uh, it's supposed to go down to minus 15 Celsius tonight. So if it doesn't work, I'm gonna have to pack up a whole lot of stuff in this garage that I don't want to have freeze and move it into the house. So there's our new circuit board. It actually sits in the heater. This would be right side up in the heater.
Okay, so the wires are really cold. They don't want to bend and flex in here. And I didn't want to just unplug them all at once and pull the board out because I may not remember where they all plug in. So I was trying to do one at a time from one board to the other. So I've got everything hooked back up, but my hands are cold enough now that I need to go in and let my hands warm up before I try and attach that board. Okay, I think we have everything hooked back up. We'll put a new three amp fuse in there on the board. We'll turn the power back on, see what happens. Well, it's starting its cycle. So our exhaust motor is kicked in to draw that create a vacuum to draw the gas fumes through. It's running. We have lots of fire burning into our tubes there now. The fan is already kicked in on the back, so it's blowing air through blowing the heat across the burner tubes inside, blows the heat out the front. The light is blinking very quickly, which is normal for this when it's running now, saying it's calling for heat. That's how it should be flashing. I know it's very dark in there. It's hard to see stuff. So it was a circuit board issue. back up and running again. So this is the board, the circuit board we took out. There's one resistor here. You can see where it's a little brown on the backing there. So it's been hot. Don't know if that's an issue. Uh, this controls the igniter. This is what went the last time I had to replace this board. And it doesn't look burnt. I don't know if this will show up. You can see the glossy green color on all of these other parts, but this one's not. So I don't know if this has been hot and it's discolored it. So perhaps that igniter module or coil or whatever it is, perhaps that is what's burnt out. But we have heat again. So for 2021, we fixed our dryer. We had to fix our dishwasher, and just this past week we had that circuit uh, board in the stove we had to replace, and now the circuit board in this. So four appliances in 2021 that we had to repair. Thank you once again for watching.